No one wants to start their vacation or have to jump into a conference with red eyes, dark circles, and an overwhelming feeling of exhaustion. In today's video, I'll be sharing my top tips for sleeping on an airplane so you can arrive at your destination looking and feeling your best. Some flights are going to be more conducive to sleep than others. When you're in the booking phase, try to find one that is non-stop. A non-stop flight means no connections, you have a longer period of time to fall into a deep sleep, and considering that the majority of airplane accidents happen on takeoff and landing, it's just some extra peace of mind that you'll only have to do this once. You'll also want to look at the flight's timing and consider one that is overnight aligning with your current sleep schedule. Upgrading to premium, business, or even first class is a great way to get some extra space. See if you can pay for these upgrades with airline loyalty points, or when you arrive at the airport, head to the gate agent and see if there are any premium or upgraded seats available. You can often get these at heavily reduced rates as the airline would rather you pay something than fly with these seats empty. If sleep is your goal and you do have the option to choose your seat, I would say go for the window. This gives you something to lean against and it also means that people are not going to be climbing over you every time that they want to get up. It also leaves you in control of that shade blind, which you are going to want to keep closed. If you are traveling as a couple, always book the aisle and the window seat, leaving that middle one empty. Only if the plane is absolutely full is anyone going to try to book that middle seat, leaving you with the full row. And if someone does happen to book the middle seat, I'm sure they will be more than happy to trade spaces with you so they do not have to be between the two of you. And choose the location that you sit on the plane wisely. You're going to want to avoid anything that's near the bathroom as well as near the back of the plane. This is where the flight attendants tend to hang out and there's a lot of commotion going on that you do not want any part of. You also don't want to pick the very back seat because these ones often don't recline. Something you're going to want to do. Check out some cool sites like Seat Guru or Expert Flyer for a seat map of your flight. You can also sign up for alerts that are going to update you as better seats become available on the exact flight that you are on. Try packing a smaller bag within your carry-on that's going to include your flight and your sleep essentials. By having a bag like this, you can store your main carry-on above the overhead bin, take this out at the beginning of the flight, and then not have to be getting up to get into that bin or having a massive suitcase at your feet. Get some exercise before your flight, even if it's just a couple laps around the airport while you're waiting to board. It may help to calm your nerves as well as promote better quality sleep. Be sure to wear comfy clothes and then lots of layers so you can be comfortable while the temperature in the cabin swings from boiling hot to sub-arctic temperatures. I honestly don't know why so many airlines still do this. Does anyone else find the airplanes absolutely freezing once you're in the sky? Something else I'll do is ask the flight attendants for extra blankets or an extra pillow. I'll also just scope out the seats around me and any that are empty, I will snag the pillow or the blankets from them. I'll take the extra pillow and place it on my lower back. If you haven't tried this, try it. Game changer. And then an eye mask and earplugs are absolute plain essentials. It's my favorite one. Pack them, use them. I'll also usually have a sticky note with me that says, wake for food or let me sleep, but I'll stick to my eye mask or to my shirt so the flight attendant knows what to do when they come around with the meals. You can also just let them know, but they might forget. Before you attempt to doze off, make sure that your seatbelt is visible and buckled on top of the blanket so the flight attendant doesn't have to wake you up to have it done up. Also think about the type of mask that you're going to wear. I prefer the fabric ones in terms of how they look, but I do find that the cheap disposable ones are much more comfortable and breathable. Your face covering is also something that you're going to want to make sure is secured. I always bring a toque with me, so not like a baseball cap, but a Canadian winter hat, because it's going to keep your eye mask on your eyes, your earplugs in your ears, and now your mask covering your face as it should be. I would imagine that the majority of sleep experts would also tell you to avoid watching a movie because of the light that's being emitted from the screen. I actually really enjoy putting a movie on and will often play something that I've seen in the past or something that has really good music or both of these factors, like a Disney movie I love or even Mamma Mia. That way I don't feel like I need to pay attention. I'll even turn the brightness of the screen all the way down, put my headphones in and start to fall asleep while I'm listening. 
If you do plan to watch something, I would say pack in your Flight Essentials mini bag a pair of your own headphones. They will usually still give you headphones for free, but I often find them to be very uncomfortable and they even hurt my ears after a long period of time. And if you're not feeling like a movie, another thing is to download the app Headspace or download some calming music that's going to help drown out the noise around you. Try to get yourself into a sleepy state by replicating the things you normally do at home. If you usually read a book before bed, bring a book with you. At the very least, you probably brush your teeth, maybe even floss. So bring a toothbrush, a little bit of toothpaste, or even just some gum so you can replicate that minty taste in your mouth and prime yourself for a good night rest. That was super cheesy and I'm just going to move on to the next point. You can also consider using things that promote sleep, like a low dose melatonin. I personally find that I do not feel groggy once I wake up from a melatonin induced sleep, but everyone is different. So know what works for you and stick with it. Herbal tea is also a great option, but you will probably need to pack your own. I usually bring with me a thermos, which I fill up with water at the airport before getting on the plane. And then I ask the flight attendant for some hot water. And my personal favorites, at least at the moment, are creamy peppermint vanilla and chamomile. These ones knock me out in a good way. You'll definitely want to avoid the coffee or the black tea that the flight attendants are coming around with as both of these are chock full with caffeine. Many pops like Coke are also full of caffeine, so avoid these. I've also heard that bubbly drinks can lead to air bubbles in your stomach expanding as you go into higher altitudes, resulting in upset stomachs for some people. I would say just avoid the drinks altogether, stick to your herbal tea, or water. Unfortunately, this also includes alcohol. This, like melatonin, is something that's going to be up to your personal preferences. I find that if I drink alcohol, I will fall asleep faster, but then my sleep will be disrupted. That's also what the science seems to promote. But if you are someone that can drink some booze, pass out, and stay asleep, go for it. Especially since alcohol is still going to be free on many long haul flights. Your best bet is almost always going to be to stick with just water, but avoid drinking too much water before or during your flight, especially if you end up at the window seat, because you are going to be up and down at the bathroom. I like to be one of the last ones to board the plane because it allows me to scope out if there are any free seats or even better, a free row. Head to your assigned seats Buckle in and wait for the airplane to take off. Once they turn off the seatbelt sign, this is your opportunity to get up and go find one of those other seats. Flight attendants might not appreciate this, and I'm not actually sure if it's something you are allowed to do, but if it means getting a full row to yourself that you can lie down and sleep in, I would say it's one of those situations where you ask for forgiveness and not permission. Take note of where in the overhead bin your main carry-on is being stored, because if you are sitting further up and the carry-on is behind you, you're going to have to wait for all the people behind you to get off the plane so you can go back there to get your carry-on to get off yourself. I encourage you to try different positions with sleeping. The classic one would be reclining the seat back and having a pillow and then leaning against the window seat. But I've seen many people that actually prefer putting the tray table down and then sleeping on it like this. Just make sure that if you're going to do this, please, please, please sanitize that tray table first. Trust me. Ooh. You can also get creative by packing a scarf inside of your mini carry-on. What I'll do with this is either use it around the bottom of the tray table and make a hammock to elevate my feet, take the scarf, wrap it around your eyes, and then tie it to the back of the headrest. So it's holding your head up and you're taking pressure off your neck while you fall asleep. It also ends up doubling as an eye mask, probably how I've gotten my very best flight sleeps. I mentioned earlier that you're going to want to avoid the light coming from your devices. I don't turn my phone off, but instead put it on night mode because I usually end up setting an alarm for about 40 minutes before the flight is set to land. 40 minutes is going to give you just enough time to get up and use the washroom before the rush and also get yourself organized with your seat pushed back up to a landing ready position. Let us know down in the comments what you do to get some extra sleep on the plane. Your fellow travelers, as well as myself, will certainly appreciate the tips. Something else I'll appreciate is if you could take a moment to give this video a quick like as it really does support the channel. Thank you so much for watching, safe travels, and I'll see you back here soon for more tips and hacks. Bye.